first speaker today is Michael Watt with Expert System. Expert System is a leading in artificial intelligence applied to unstructured data, robotic processing, claims automation, and other areas. With a market capitalization of over $100 million and a stock price that has more than doubled in the last six months. Welcome, Michael. Thank you. Good morning. So here in Omaha, home of the College World Series, I just had to start with a baseball quote today from the great philosopher Yogi Berra. The future ain't what it used to be. And while Yogi was talking about a lot of things, but I think the one thing that's undeniable is technology adoption's changed. If we look at ball player generations as being 20 years, which is what they say, it took four generations for the telephone to be adopted, two for the radio, and then once we got to internet and Facebook, it's not to say that Angry Birds and Pokemon Go were more transformational than social media or the web, but it met a consumer need and it got adapted quickly. In insurance, that's no different. So a couple uh, public service announcements here. The InsureTech SP, make sure you're using that. Bruce already mentioned it. Um, on LinkedIn in particular, that's our group. Join it, collaborate, not just this week for the rest of the year, until we meet again next year. And also, if you're interested in the content that I have today, I have to go fast. I'm giving real business cases of AI in insurance. Um, you can download all of my slides, three use cases that I don't get a chance to download in, or cover in detail. You can download it on this link here. So if we look at this circle, and this circle, consider it your world of data. And if you're a major insurer, you have 100 terabytes of information. But here's the thing. You're only using 1% of it right now. And the big culprit, 80% of your information is unstructured. It's text, it's reports, it's documents. It's things that for generations we've had to manually process. That's changing. Because that's changing, if you look to your right and your left, consider that that's your competitors. This time next year, one of them is gonna be using artificial intelligence. For that reason, Gartner says that AI adoption the next 12 months is about to just accelerate at a pace that we've never seen. But what does this really mean? So before I go into a little bit about the business cases that I mentioned, let me give you a quick background on our company. Um, we specialize only in technology that can accurately read and make sense of unstructured text, right? So documents, reports, emails, that type of thing. I can tell you a lot about our company, but the best thing for me to do is point out Matt Lave right here. Matt is retired um, Marine Sergeant, Infantry Squad Leader, 1-5 Charlie Company. He has three active tours of duty. And Matt, we're very proud to have him as the newest member of our team. I point this out because Matt will be the first to tell you when the Department of Defense or intelligence community decide to sole source the use of, the of a technology, they have to produce public transparency on why. So recently, the Department of Defense tested our technology against 12 of our competitors, 17 requirements, the same requirements that you as an insurance company would look to uh, evaluate this type of natural language understanding, uh, or we call it cognitive AI, right? You've heard NLU maybe as a buzzword. So tested the same requirements that you would probably look at, right? Accuracy, transparency, can I trust the outputs, um, ability to customize, ability to add to it, ability to refine uh, once it's in production. And what they found is that we were the only company in the world to meet all 17 of the requirements. And second place wasn't even close. They met 30% fewer, and that was second best. So we have good tech, and we also work with a lot of large multinational companies. A lot of the major insurers, but I think more importantly for us is that we work in other industries. And what we find is that as we deploy technology that can accurately read and make sense of unstructured information, we find that, believe it or not, things in oil companies sometimes are applicable to insurance. Especially in banking and finance, um, we find that there's a lot of synergies. So we have the expertise of having done already 300 global successful implementations of this technology, um, just this natural language understanding based tech, combine it maybe with a couple other technologies like robotics, and all of a sudden we have a whole ecosystem that can do things that you never thought before was possible. And the last one here, we wanna talk about the future. Let's talk about a major insurer with four million annual emails. And they struggled because this team was a revolving door. It was repetitive, it was boring, had to respond to a thousand emails a day on average, right? 
Well, they came to us to say, hey, how can, we, how can we fix this? Because the challenge is that training somebody to do this job new, extremely difficult because you have to know so much about the internal operations of the business. So what it turns out is that two thirds of these emails can actually be closed. The inner and external loops can actually just be handled by the AI. So it can read, make sense of the situation, open up the claim, send the email to the customer. Okay, I need this documentation from you. Here's your claim number. Um, here's how you can send that to us, either by email or going into an account. If you need to call us, here's the number, right? And now these emails are just being processed instantly. And the other 1.5 million out of the four, well, they require either critical, um, critical thinking, real evaluative work, or uh, it's a situation where, given the context, you want to have empathy and compassion for the customer. You want to have that personal touch point, right? So you can download this video as well um, and check out a little bit about this. And this is similar to what we can do with chatbots. So uh, in finance is an example where chatbots and this technology can extend. So we have 75 um, types of processes like that for making a payment and things that the chatbots can't do that we add on top of that. Um, and now all of a sudden your chatbot it became a Ferrari. So in, in conclusion here, it's almost 2020, 80% of your information is unstructured and it's time that you make it actionable. Thank you.